Cool. Uh, so that was great. Uh, I feel bad now presenting you something that is a little bit uh, easier. Um, yeah, so this talk, so everyone, Nassim uh, from uh, the security team at Docker. Um, very nice to meet you all. Um, today is going to be about uh, bringing some usability to, uh, to security and especially on security interfaces that we, uh, that we provide, especially uh, at Docker. Uh, we have this concern of like, making uh, stuff usable uh, as much as possible. And uh, yeah, we just feel like we have a lot of uh, uh, work to do on the, um, <coughs> on the security side. So um, this is how people see currently security. Uh, that's a maze for those who didn't notice. Um, and it's actually pretty hard to choose between the current options that we provide. And everyone that is not satisfied with the defaults have to uh, yeah, either dig into uh, very hard stuff or um, literally escape out of it and decide not to, uh, not to enter into the maze. So. This is how uh, security should be, something that is as usable as pressing a button, maybe two, three, but something that scales pretty well with the intent of the, uh, of the users. Um, I don't know why my slideshow is, oops. Anyway, I'll try to handle that. Um, yeah, so what do we provide for now? Um, on both uh, Docker, and uh, Kubernetes. At the lower level, uh, in terms of security interfaces, users have to choose between stuff like adding a capability, dropping one, uh, modify, uh, providing a new second profile, providing a new AppArmor profile, um, an ST-Linux profile, enabling or uh, uh, disabling namespaces, um, stuff like this. Um, do you really think that developers should know about all of this or ops? Uh, we, don't, we don't. So this is generally uh, how I imagine uh, people using our stuff reacting to, uh, to the help. Help. Um, yeah, so yeah. sorry again. I'll try to, to date. But yeah, whenever they uh, see what we, uh, we have to propose, they literally seek for the uh, way out of the maze. So be it uh, the privilege flag, which literally disables everything. So at, at that point, just run bare metal like it's, yeah. Um, you can use the default profiles, which, uh, which are decent, but not least secure. And the purpose of security is also to adapt to the, uh, to, the, uh, to the task that we are trying to, uh, to achieve. Um, yeah, they either uh, specify a non-confined uh, behavior for a second app armor as Linux, or just say containers are not secure, and yeah, that's that. So yeah, this is, uh, one, uh, this is the tree of uh, what they have to dig into uh, when they want to learn about kernel uh, features, so Linux namespaces, um, capabilities, syscall filtering, everything. That's just not possible. So what we want to do is provide something that real life users, people that actually don't have an insight on the, uh, the, the system that they are working above, uh, want to know. So. The proposal is to is inspired from the same principle as the end elements on uh, macOS and iOS, and also on um, yeah you have a s similar system of um, of rights and permissions to ask in different uh, operating system, espe especially on the mobile side, and yeah we want to provide the list that people can actually understand, provide several levels of. Um, just improve the granularity for each category of, um, of um, the, the software that you are working on. For example, I develop my app. I'd, I'd like to say, hey, my app needs 
admin rights in terms of network, even though I don't know exactly what that means. Uh, I mean, under the hood, I know that it's a, a high level, a high degree of uh, of um, of pr permissions to ask from the uh, from the from the system. Same thing for security and host resources control and many other stuff. We want to make this as easy as possible for a user to choose and just provide the best granularity at its level, not what's best for us. So yeah, this is the, the face of Obama when he read my proposal. <laughs> so how does it work? Um, the, uh, the, the user actually specifies a list of strings. For example, I want to, I want the, to activate the network none entitlement. I want to be, my container to be completely confined. And behind the scene, we will actually customize the second profile, the app armor profile, the set of capabilities, and various, um, various informations that will be then um, forwarded to, uh, to containerd and then run C. For the, uh, for the creation of uh, a proper environment for the, for the, for the container. This is, the, this is what's actually hard for, uh, for users. It's because, for now, they have to do this if they want to be completely secure. And it's not possible. We have to do it ourselves if we want to uh, make security efficient um, in, the, in the container space. Another example, network admin. Can actually, so we have a level that is just below it, that is network proxy, and we can actually add some stuff on top of a proxy. We can actually say, uh, yeah, a proxy doesn't necessarily need to, uh, to use SO debug for, uh, for uh, socket um, operations. Uh, it n doesn't necessarily need the capnet admin, stuff like this. So we can always tune the different uh, aspects of the, uh, the container environment. Uh, yeah, so let's do some math. Um, this is the second part of the proposal. So if we manage to implement the, the, the first part, we actually get the, the ability for a user to have its image and a list of entitlement. Wouldn't it be great to like build it and be able to have a single blob of data that contains both the image and the secu security profile baked in? Let's say we want to go uh, one step further. Let's say we want to sign it and have that blob signed. We can actually manage now. Wow, that's sad. I actually tried to, uh, to add an emoji through, uh, oh well. Whatever. It was, yeah, it was supposed to be a lock and a key and play the secure guy. Um, anyway. Uh, so, yeah. You have a signed blob of data with its own security profile that you can push and pull. Wow, that's powerful. I'm sorry. <laughs> wow. Is that a ghost? Wow. Okay. Well, uh, now that we have the emojis that originally had colors, you can understand that it's actually way easier for publishers to advertise best security settings by providing uh, a security profile along with their image. And it's also safer for a user that doesn't have lots of information about how to run the image, not to have to dig into documentation and potentially, certainly, make bad choices. Uh, one example that I have in mind, for example, uh, Vault, uh, the Vault image from Hashicorp uh, actually needs um, to use IPC lock uh, to lock memory and prevent it from being swapped. And plenty of people actually have to go through the whole internet or through the documentation of the image, but yeah, uh, to, to understand that they have to specify themselves something on the command line. 
And it's not possible to provide something like this at the uh, cluster management level. For example, on the Docker service uh, command line. So this is why uh, you probably find in the Mobi project plenty of people complaining that there are not yet uh, security options uh, with that granularity. It's because it actually doesn't make a lot of sense to provide it as is. We should provide a higher level mechanism which people should be able to customize in order to, uh, to use a lower level of, um, a higher level of granularity, sorry. So yeah, um, the key goals for, uh, for uh, so those will be uh, sent as two different proposals in the Mobi project. First, having the, uh, the entitlements and then having the security profiles. Um, yeah, the, the, the key goal is pretty much the user experience. People uh, need to have a better way to, uh, to use and specify um, uh, configuration on images. Um, it's, also, um, it's also a great opportunity to build a new security um, standard in terms of high-level permissions uh, when we want to uh, not only manage stuff at the container level, but at a higher level of abstraction. And the, the goal is also to give the opportunity to the, uh, to the, um, sorry, to the uh, users to have only to, uh, to think about roles and the platforms beh behind the scene actually do the work of the translation into their own representation of um, the, the, the environment configuration. We definitely want to ditch the privilege flag because uh, enough is enough. And um, we also want to, uh, to introduce a, be a better level of uh, least, uh, least privilege security. And yeah, tie uh, security profiles to image securely for, the, uh, for the, both the users and the publishers to, uh, to actually have um, a better way to exchange information and so send and receive on the other side. We should also support custom entitlements. Uh, this system doesn't fit everyone's needs, obviously, so we need to provide a way for people to specify um, stuff that we had. On, uh, for example, on Docker, uh, we were providing um, C uh, CCTL options. Uh, we don't do this anymore on the service create. We think that we should still provide a way for people to specify um, options at that level. Um, and yeah, it should be able to do API access control. Uh, maybe you uh, do the service-to-service uh, -service communication control, leveraging some identity uh, management, uh, service identity management um, tool. And yeah, it's uh, completely open, so everyone's ID and contribution is definitely um, appreciated. Uh, so now is the time for a demo. So sorry, uh, Tonis, it will be like pretty bad compared to yours, but I'll still try to. Um, it's probably a little bit small. Ooh. Let me know when it's enough for the, uh, for the people at the back of the room. It's perfect? Cool. Is it fine? Yeah, okay, cool. So as you can see here, I'm... Uh, I'm specifying a list of entitlements um, on, the, uh, on the command line. And the, uh, the image that I'm trying to launch is our uh, nemesis at Docker. It's Docker in Docker, which actually requires the privilege flag, even though we, uh, we advertise not to use this thing. So yeah, have a, have a look at it. We specify the security admin uh, entitlement because we'll need um, we'll need definitely a lot of control over the uh, the security file system um, and other uh, syscalls that come with with yeah different uh, a very high level of privilege in terms of security. Uh, we also add the uh, entitlement network admin profile because it needs to do a privileged operation on the. Uh, 
at the network level. And we also need to, uh, to um, mount the host C groups into the, uh, into the, uh, the sorry, into the, uh, the, uh, the container. So this is why we'll need uh, permissions in terms of uh, host devices control. So it's running. Sounds good. Let me. Let me run a uh, Alpine inside it. Come on, internet. Yeah. Nice. Cool. So now, can I reach out? Get my packages? Yeah. Sounds cool. I can do some stuff. All right. Cool. So this is an example that. Um, uh, we can use on the uh, the Docker run command line the the entitlements. So let's kill that thing, right? So now, uh, super happy because I managed pretty recently to have it work on the uh, on the Docker service uh, side as well. Works for the back of the room. Okay. So same thing. Uh, security admin, network admin, and host devices admin to create a Docker in Docker service because why not, right? Cool. And now, yes. All right, cool. So, as you can see, and we don't have to uh, to use an unconfined uh, setup for the Aparmore and second profiles. Uh, we keep a bunch of uh, a bunch of capi capabilities of the uh, the uh, the list available for the um, for the uh, the user and. Yeah, we actually don't escape out of the uh, the whole security setup. So, pretty uh, pretty cool. Yeah, uh, pretty uh, pretty much over. Sorry. Yeah. So what's left? Just uh, updating the proposal uh, to Moby with the uh, integration bits. Uh, we also have some PRs coming from uh, on the uh, Moby. Docker CLI and SwarmKit sites. Uh, God, again, those uh, emojis. Um, and yeah, please provide as much feedback as possible. We need to uh, we need to have the proper granularity right uh, the, on the first iteration as much as possible. And then yeah, security profiles uh, through uh, Docker build, push, pull, and the on the Kubernetes side. We are finishing the PRD along with Tim Alclair from uh, Google. And yeah, after that, we'll write the community proposal and we'll work together on the uh, implementation. And yeah, feel free to uh, check out the, the repo and the Mobi proposal. Give as much feedback as possible, and integration PRs are coming soon. Stay tuned. Thank you very much, everyone. I just, I think you're all going to appreciate this. I 
I didn't have Docker running for the record. <laughs> Battery life. This is where we test how long it takes for Windows to boot. wasn't too bad. All right, so I'm going to talk to you very quickly about uh, signing, which is predominantly notary, and uh, our efforts on scanning. Um, I promise there won't be a single picture of a graph. Uh, and this is, this is going to be sort of a project update, uh, more than demos or anything else. So for those that aren't familiar, is one of these going to work? There we go. All right, what is notary? Notary is a highly secure platform for scanning collections of digital content. We built it as a very purist Golang implementation of the update framework, which was developed by some researchers out of New York University uh, as an extension of Thandi, which was an updater built for the Tor project. And Thandi was designed to be resistant to nation state attackers. Uh, tough carries those guarantees through and adds a large number of additional guarantees against some very esoteric attacks against your update system. Um, we integrate Notary into Docker as Docker Content Trust, but if anyone is interested in using uh, Notary as a standalone signing platform, uh, there is both a library um, with a defined interface uh, and there is a set of command line tools. So it's, and I actually see one project that has integrated it completely independently, which is kind of cool. Um, a good reason for using something like Notary as opposed to adding uh, PGP signing and your own sort of additional guarantees, I think was summed up by Duncan Coots. I believe I'm pronouncing his name correctly. Uh, he is a maintainer of Cabal, which is the package manager for Haskell. Um, and he said, Tough has been designed by academic experts in the subject, based both on research and existing real world systems. Our crypto humility should cover not just crypto algorithms, but extend to whole system designs. I think this really nicely sums up why we shouldn't just be trying to bolt on new features to sort of play whack-a-mole with existing update systems. You know, it is time to reassess and to build something that defeats all of the attacks we're familiar with and some of the ones that we've only theorized about and approach that as a holistic solution. So you'll all be happy to hear. Uh, we donated Notary to the CNCF. We, we made a proposal. Um, we've reached the quorum of votes. So as far as we know, it's going through. There's some paperwork to be completed. And most excitingly, as part of this process, we have a logo finally, after two and a half years. <laughs> TUF itself uh, was actually part of that proposal. Um, and TUF is a living specification. Uh, there is a process called TAPS. They're very similar to PEPS in Python. Uh, anybody can propose a tap, um, and I thought it'd be interesting just to sort of highlight a few of the particularly um, sort of feature-rich ones that have come through. Uh, there is now an accepted tap for multi-delegation thresholds. In the past, you would define a threshold on a single collection in such a way that you had to deal with synchronizing all of the people who needed to sign that thing, and essentially while you were dealing with that synchronization, nobody could be pushing updates. Multi-delegation thresholds allow every single person to have their own bucket of content that they're signing new things into, and then quorum across all of those people is what defines the threshold. So you can say, you know, this group of, this group of five people is required to sign a given piece of content, but they can all operate completely as free agents. And only when you need to go and actually pull something, so now you say, okay, I want to download version 1.0 of the application, you go and check if your particular threshold which doesn't necessarily just need to be a simple quorum. You can set that configurably. It could be all five people need to agree. Uh, another nice one that was accepted was removing native support for compressed metadata. Um, tough support for compression resulted in significantly larger objects. You had to include every single version of compression as a new line item in your repository. Um, the, the specification is moving to just say, this is something you define over the transport layer. We don't care. We only care about 
the actual final uncompressed version of the content you want people to download. Um, it slightly reduces complexity, which I'm excited about. Um, things that are in review that are interesting, multi-repository thresholds. This one is especially interesting to companies that publish software to other package managers. Uh, say, for example, you publish something that gets uh, distributed through um, Debian's apt repositories. You could actually run your own tough repository. You sign your content in there. Debian separately runs their tough repository, and they sign your content into their repository. But a user downloading it can have a configuration that says, I want to get trust from both the publisher and from the distributor. So it can give you that higher degree of trust in those cases where your packages come sort of through somebody else's distribution system, which is nice. Um, additionally, self-service key rotation. Prior to now, key rotations always had to be by sort of the next most important key in the system. Um, there is a proposal that will allow people to say, uh, you know, I, I don't use this key anymore, or I want to add this person as you know, an alternate signer to me on the same collection, and have a way to do that by themselves without having to go back up the chain. This is particularly useful. Uh, one of the proposals to Python for using tough signing for the Python package index had this idea that you would sign out delegations to specific package maintainers. Um, and obviously, packages may have you know, a release captain, somebody defined for a particular release. And that may change over time. So having this as a self-service operation allows the Python package index to say, this is the person we trust once, and then that group to sort of maintain their own, their own membership and signing schematic. Um, I said I would talk about somebody who actually integrated Notary. Um, Collide is a tool that runs over OS query that allows you to get sort of a nice, pretty interface um, on top of everything that's in your infrastructure. Uh, they actually integrated Notary into an auto-updater they built for OS query, and then had that entire platform audited by NCC Group. Um, and I was really happy when I saw the report come back, because there was nothing in the critical, high-risk, or even medium uh, issues. Um, and the low-risk issue uh, is actually something in the integration layer they put on top. Um, they will allow files to accidentally be copied into privileged locations via symlinks. Um, but considered low risk. Uh, moving on to SIG scanning. Uh, this is the open working group we have for uh, sort of improving scanning in the community, sharing ideas. And um, you know, our goals are kind of the ultimate tangible thing from our goals is to have tooling that you can all use. Um, but quickly, you know, what do we mean by scanning? Because there are lots, lots of different components that fall under scanning. Uh, we're talking about inspection and analysis of container images. You know, we're not talking about doing dynamic runtime scanning of your containers once they're deployed into a cluster. The group may eventually extend into those kinds of things, but the goal right now is to focus on something that, you know, there are already a lot of tools in the market, a lot of people want to use them, a lot of people have questions. Let's try and consolidate and make them easy for everybody to use. Specifically, the types of scanning that we've been looking at are Code analysis, and, you know, these are both static types of scanning, but code analysis, so looking at um, interpreted languages like Python, looking for things like SQL injections, bad file permissions, and sensitive data. For anyone who uses Swarm, uh, if you haven't heard already, the SWM TKN that's on the front of your tokens that allow you to join new nodes into your Swarm, that's exactly to make scanning for sensitive data much easier. Like it gives you a, something you can regex on really easily to find if anybody's, anybody's committed a Swarm token into your repository. And then additionally, the scanning that's already integrated into products like Docker um, or like Claire, which fingerprints for CVEs. Um, and ideally, we want all the scanning providers to have a deep inspection of statically compiled binaries. This means going in and you know, finding when OpenSSL has actually been compiled into some larger binary, not just looking at uh, the dynamic libraries. Use cases for this, vulnerability scanning, um, both for compliance and sort of general health of your software and your infrastructure. Uh, if you happen to, happen to deal with something like PCI compliance, you know, there are requirements that you cannot deploy CVEs with a score higher than, I believe, it's seven. Um, so ideally, a scanning process should help you manage that risk and audit your software. And obviously, you never want to be hit by something like Heartbleed or Shellshock. So you, know, you should also be just squashing vulnerabilities and making sure that you stay up to date as part of your general health. 
Uh, additionally, license auditing, we've been told, is very important to a lot of people. Many organizations have requirements on what licenses they're allowed to deploy into production. So we want scanning to provide that information. And then software inventorying has been raised with us as something that um, certain organizations need to do. Uh, regardless of, you know, sort of health or licenses, they literally just need a big list of like, this is everything we have deployed in our infrastructure. So these are kind of use cases that we're trying to meet. If you have any additional use cases, um, on the Mobi discourse platform, there's a SIG scanning section. Uh, so please come and talk to us in there. Uh, exciting announcements on tooling. Um, Google last week announced a tool and open sourced it called Grapheus. I'm told it's a Greek word. If there are any Greek people in the room, I apologize if I'm butchering your language. Um, Grapheus is a tool for describing metadata about really software in general. Um, but we're looking at using it specifically for container images. Um, they also announced a tool called Critis that hasn't been open sourced yet. This sort of fills a role of something we talked about very early in SIG scanning's life. And we decided to put off as a later piece of software. But essentially, it's a policy manager. It can take all of the metadata from Grapheus and other sources and make decisions about, can I deploy this thing to production? Um, we're really excited that Google's going to be coming and talking to SIG Scanning about these on our next meeting on Monday. Um, and we're looking forward to sort of helping continue to push those and make them really usable for everybody. Uh, that was all I had, so thank you. And Apparently, the formatting got balked. <laughs>